Hey everyone, it's Joan Isaias here from The Automator. Today, this is a really, really cool concept. Isaias showed me the day and I'm like, wow, this is really powerful. We're talking about binding a, a function and making it, there's actually a lot of applications to it, but I'm telling you, stick with this, hang out to the end because you're just going to love the, the ability and how simple it is, yet it really makes things much easier to understand. So let me start with a very simple example and then we'll build up from there. So let's see, you have used the win weight active function or command very often, right? Now, you remember that you have to pass the title of the window that you're waiting for, usually a Windows text, and also sometimes a timeout. Now, when you're passing the timeout, this parameter there is always blank. So what happens is it's annoying that a lot of times, you, especially if you're automating some programs, you have to do a lot of things like wait for notepad, blank, and then for five seconds, for example, right? Now you have this blank parameter there all the time. And what if you don't have to put those two commas there? What if you just pass two parameters? Well, you can. What we can do is kind of like rename or refactor in some way that particular function to do whatever I want. So I would say, you know what? I'm gonna bind that function. And binding just means grabbing one of the parameters or many parameters, depends on what you want to do, and setting a specific um, uh, parameter there all the time, even if I don't pass it. And in this case, the first parameter, which is the one on the left, I don't care about it. But the second parameter, I always want to pass blank to it for now. That's what I want to do. And I'm going to call this new function, that's where renaming comes into place, win, wait, timeout. And I'm going to, this creates a variable, and I now called my function win, wait, timeout. Now I can call the win, wait, timeout exactly the same as I would call my um, win, activate, or win, wait, active. But the second parameter is always passed by me. It's always passed as blank. So I don't have to worry about it. Now I just say, well, I'm going to wait for notepad for five seconds. And that is do, that's going to do exactly the same thing as if I was passing the blank parameter there. I just bound it. And every time I call win, wait, timeout, and you can call it as a function if you want, right? Like this, so that it makes sense. So now the second parameter, even though I didn't put it, right. and, and you might think, oh, but this is the second parameter. Yeah, it's not. It's not well, because you're being pass you're passing it here bound already. That's it is the second parameter of your function. Of your but, function, right. But when it gets pushed back into there, it's actually the third, right? Exactly. That is correct. So now let's take a look at it in a more yeah. Well, when you were explaining this to me, like in my head, I'm like, oh, I get it. I'm setting a default value, so to speak. But yeah, in, in auto hotkey. You, if you can't just set like the third thing is having a default value, if you're going to have a default value, you can't leave the other exactly. one blank, right? This exactly. gets around that. Like suddenly you're like, oh, it's See, very that, cool. That's totally right. So let's say, yeah. let's let's go ahead and create a personal function. Let's call it my function. So, and you have parameter one. So let's make it P1 for not short, P2 and P3. Now, if you want the second parameter to be optional, you have to make number three optional too. But what if I don't want to? Yeah, that's the problem. So let, my, my function is just gonna show the parameters, P1, um, it's gonna have a space, P2 and P3. And basically as it is defined, every time I call my function, I have to pass three parameters, one, two, and three, always. So if I do this, uh, let me see, hold on, uh, P1, P2, P3. Message box. Oh, because I misspelled that. It's not message box. <laughs> so as you can see, everything is simply, I pass three parameters. It took the three parameters. It displayed them. If I don't pass one of the parameters, it's going to complain about it. Yeah. Sure. So, hey, you're not doing it right. If I want the second parameter to be optional, yeah, tough luck. You can't unless you make number three optional too. In this case, I have to do this. Um, but with saying, you know what? Um, yeah, leave that function exactly as it is, but bind 
the second or let's say the first parameter to blank. Now I will call my function again. And hold on, let me make it. Uh, you need a different name there, don't you? Yeah, so because okay. I have to save it into a variable. Yeah, so this right. is going to be my uh, my new function, right? Yep. Now, whenever I call my new function, now I can pass two parameters to it. Now, let's say one and two. And it will pass the first one automatically for me. And you will not notice it right now because it's blank. But let's do this. Let's name this. This is P1, right? This is P2. And this is P3. And you will now see that the first parameter is blank. And the second parameter says one. And the third one says two. Because I bound the first one. And now just to add, change that to have a value. Right, there you go. Now that'll be very clear of like... Yeah, so now the first parameter, even though I'm not passing it on my function, it is going to be there and it's, go it's going to be saying first all the time. Now, this is the interesting part. I can bind as many parameters as I want. So this right. one is going to say third. And now I'm just passing number one in here and two parameters are bound. So now the first and third parameter are bound by my new function. And the one in the middle, whenever I pass a parameter, is the one that is going to be passed to it. Um, now, let me check this. If I pass a parameter here, <coughs> it's going to tell you, it's going to say, hey, you're passing too many parameters to it. Because it's telling you, hey, you cannot do that because I already, I'm already passing those. You see, so it is it is a very specific name. So if you want a different, the same function but bound in a different way, you can do it. So let's call it my first, third, right? So those two are bound, but I could also bind only the second parameter. So I don't need this one and I don't want to bind this one either. And this is my second. So now when I call my second, I have to pass two parameters. I have to pass the one and the three. And the second is bound. But if I call my first third here, I cannot pass two parameters to it. I only have to pass one to it. And it is bound for the other yeah, that's, two. That's phenomenal. Right, so you can call the same function in different ways if you want, and so on. So now that you know more or less, you know, what the idea is about binding the parameters, when would I use this? There's a very one that I have not done myself, but it is like, yes, sure, you can do that. If you have problems with DLL calls, I have an example here of a DLL call, right? Let me... Let me go back here. What you will know is that in the LL calls, the name of the function never changes. It's always the same for that function, right? And the type of parameters that you pass to it never changes either. The only thing that changes are the parameters that you pass to the function. But that's the reason why the LL calls are so confusing because you have a lot of types and so things. If you figure the DLL call out, then bind those parameters and make it simpler for you. So this is the window get window rectangle, which gives you the bounding rectangle, the, P, the, the X and Y positions of each of the points of the window. Let's call that get rectangle. So like get win rectangle. So I, I, I want a shorter name and I want to bind the DLL call. What I want to bind, I want to bind that. I want to bind that. I don't want to bind this. And I don't want to bind that. Those are my bound parameters now, right? Now, whenever I call get win rect, I just have to pass those two things. So let's go ahead and call it. So right here, I'm going to call my get win rectangle. And the first thing was the window active win exist or window exists, that gives me the handle. And the second parameter is the rectangle. Now my code looks, looks cleaner 
it looks like a normal auto hotkey function, but every time I'm calling this function, it's automatically calling DLL call with those three parameters. And this will work. So just by doing that, what it's gonna do is that um, if I run the script and I hit F2, it is gonna give me the four positions of that particular window. So the left corner, which is here, is at minus one. This is because of DPI settings that I have set up right now. The top corner, which is the one at the right, is gonna be here. The right is gonna be here and the bottom is gonna be there. So everything, all the corners, like the, I think the points that I'm actually hitting are the middle of the window here, 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 and here. That's where the window is at. So I get, if I move this and I try it again, so let me just say F2, it's going to give me different positions. So it's, it's the location of the window. So just changing it to being something simpler to read in my code makes a huge difference because now I know that it's just two parameters that I have to call. Everything else is just the same. And it makes sense to me to make it easier. And just with the binding of a function, it just yeah. a one liner that I can do. And then later on, I can use it anytime I want in my code. So yeah. Very cool. All right. So if you enjoyed that and learned something, please like the video. You know, we uh, release videos twice a week here from the automator and teach you how to work smarter, not harder. If you're wanting to learn like this is a, the topic itself is not advanced. We have good courses on learning auto hotkey. So we, in that, in the, we haven't covered this one yet, but in a course, uh, but yeah. if you want to learn the um, intro to auto hockey course, NV2 is a good solid course to get get you started in learning auto yeah, hockey. That is right. So take a look at that. Or join our hero group where we share stuff like this. We we did this a couple of weeks ago in the hero call. That, the hero yeah. call, yeah. Yeah, and it's because it's great being able to do a Q&A, like when you see yeah. it and then to be able to ask follow-up questions on how would I adapt this to this thing? Like, And that's the stuff that you can ask if you're live on a call with us. So thank you. Cheers.